so we have the data source here we are we are talking about streams now okay now and, and see how streams really help you so i have this data source with me this is the data structure and i want to process each and every element that is there in this data structure i want to do some lot of processing work now how do i do it one way is that you know prior to java 1.8 i had absolutely no choice but to loop through this data structure i'll say you know the for loop is what i'm going to use and i'll take each and every element in the for loop and then i will write my if else and if statements i will write maybe for loop within a for loop and all the uh, you know required stuff maybe i wanted to convert this to uh, in in java 1. Point, until java 1.7 if i wanted to just simply convert this to a list of uh, maybe the length of names, you know, I want to find out uh, what is the length of Verizon, Nomura, JPMC, Morgan Stanley and so on. What is the length of these names? And I wanted to put the length into some kind of a, you know, a list data structure like, uh, you know, five, six, eight length or maybe something else. You know, I wanted to do some kind of processing. Then in that case, I have no choice but to, uh, you know, run through each one of these elements in a loop. But then you have got a better way of doing it from uh, 1.8 onwards. And it is not only about the ease of writing code with respect to the processing that I want to done that I want to do with each one of these elements. There is a much much uh, bigger benefit than just the ease of writing of code. I'll come to that in a moment. So what I'm going to do is I'll say you know uh, let me use a, f a formatter off over here so that I can write fluent style of API. Uh, you know fl fluent style of uh, you know coding. So I'll say name start. I say stream. Okay. I take a stream. Now, stream is not the container of the data source. I repeat, please do not be under the impression that the uh, entire content of the RL list uh, will be copied into the stream. No, absolutely not. Stream is just a wrapper. It's actually a processor over your data source. It's going to read each one of those elements. Okay, the best statement would be it will actually iterate over each one of the elements that is there in the data source. I repeat, it will, it, it will iterate over each and every element that is there in the data source. So it will start iterating. Now, once it starts iterating, I can very well, you know, change or rather modify the type or I can change the existing type itself to some, I can mutate the object. I'll say X and I will say, uh, you know, what I want to return back is a return. Okay. X dot length. Okay. And then I said dot and I say, uh, okay, X dot length. What is this X? This X is each one of these elements that I'm going to receive over here. And then I'll say collect. And which collector I would want to use? I'll say collectors dot. I'll say to list is the collector that I want to use. Where can I put it? I can put it very well into the list of integer because that's what the length is. I'll say name lengths is equal to. Okay, is equal to. Here you go. Okay, this is what I have written. See this. It's compiled successfully and if I want to write my code here and if I want to actually print it then I can just simply say system dot dot print and I'll say name lens okay this is what I can do let me click right mouse button run as Java application see this it has given me 76414 now I've just given you a very very simple example there can be any kind of processing done over here over here in our real life projects you know many a times what we do is that we we uh, we've got an object uh, you know we, we we start getting the data from we get the data from the database and it is of type say for example invoice but i want to convert it to uh, you know uh, some other data type you know related to invoice then i will map through it i will change the data type put it into an rl list and so and then filter and a lot of things can be done over here i can filter i can say for example uh, i'll say uh, okay i'll say filter here i was just trying to find out I'll say dot filter. I will. I was just trying to find out which one of these has got some common. So O R G O R A. Okay, Stanley Morgan. Okay, J P. I'll write J P Morgan and company. Okay, and I'll say X again. This X is what X is. Each one of those elements that are there in the data source X dot. Uh, uh, so I'll say uh, uh, you know X is what I get, and then I say if X dot. I'll say contains. Okay. Morgan. Okay, this is what I'm giving. So this will return. This is actually a Boolean expression, either true or false. Uh, correct. Now you see this. I'll get only and only lens of Morgan Stanley and J.P. Morgan here. That's it. Okay. It's not necessary that I always change the data type. I'm commenting this. I can very well say return x dot to uppercase, something like this. That's fine. It's just that I will have to make this an uh, as a list of string because I'm returning back a string, something like this. You see. 
right? It's the same data type, it's the same, but then I'm just changing it to uppercase. You see JP Morgan and Company, Morgan Stanley. Very simple stuff. And last few things I would like to bring to your notice. What is the big benefit? There are a lot of things here, friends. You know, you can filter, you can map, you can flat map, a lot of things. Friends, understand this. Not just that it it helps it helps me to write clean code. It helps me to you know avoid uh, you know the for loops and stuff and all. It's not only about that. See the next thing that I'm bringing on the table. I'll say thread. Okay, which particular thread? So I'll say thread dot current thread dot get name. Okay, please see this. In which thread do you think this will execute? It's going to execute in the main thread. Take a look in main thread, main thread. And what is the name of that element there? Okay, so let me say x plus, okay, is being processed in, okay, take a look now. See, JP Morgan and company is being processed in main and Morgan Stanley is being processed in main. You can see this, both of these elements. Why am I getting only two? Because I have given a uh, right, I can also reverse it. I'll say not. Now I'll get all the elements other than those two. So Verizon and Namora. You can see, but in the main thread, in the main thread. Correct, this is in the main thread. Now, my dear friends, take a look at this. I'll say dot parallel. Just see, dot parallel. And now I do this. You can see this. Verizon was processed in common worker, common pool worker three, whereas Namura was processed in common worker, uh, common pool worker one. That means they are both executing in two different threads. These thread happens to be the threads from folk joint pool, common pool, which is one single common pool per JVM. Right, that is what it does. This is the big benefit that I get. If I wanted to otherwise parallelize my work, then in that case, the, the, the kind of algorithm that I will end up writing will be complex, pretty complex for me to maintain it in time to come and by the entire team. So I want something which is out of the box in order to parallelize my work so that the performance can be increased. See the benefit here. This is what I get with streams. This is the big benefit as compared to the other benefits that you've got of streams. Correct. Plus you get uh, the, uh, you know, all the data here in a data structure. No worries about, uh, uh, you know, uh, data race or anything else. This is a new data structure that you get, which gets constructed in this particular containing thread.